In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to work with text and fonts using the US Cutter edition of Vinyl Master Cut. If you'd like to know where to get more advanced tools and features, please go to the end of this lesson for more details. So to begin with, you need to open up Vinyl Master Cut and create a new page. Now I've done one here, as so, and you'll see that Vinyl Master Cut comes with two types of text. It comes with artistic and vertical text and to add text to the designing area is very easy. All we do is we come to this uh, text tool and we can click on either artistic or vertical text. You can also toggle between the two here when we have the actual text selected. So I'll show you how to add text into the designing area. You simply click on this button here, you'll see the cursor appears and you can place it anywhere in the designing area. It can be on the page or off the page, doesn't matter. You can click here like so anywhere you like and type in some text like so and if you want to make that larger you can click on the sizing handle here and resize it so that's how we add text to the designing area and once we've added the text we can use this center node to position the text anywhere we like on the designing area or on the page now if you want to add vertical text it's a very similar thing you just click on this tool here click on vertical text go anywhere in the designing area on the page or off the page and again type in some text and resizing again is very simple from these resizing handles or nodes and that's how we type in vertical text if we want to delete text off the page here it's very simple you can click on the delete selected tool up here which is usually hidden away by clicking on this button hide reveal tool that will delete the text you can also select it like so and click uh, or press delete on your keyboard and that deletes the text like so. Now, another way of getting text into Vinyl Master Cut is to use copy and paste from another program. So I've put some text into Word here, and as you can see, I've got this text in Word. I can simply left click and drag over that text and select it. I can right click and go copy, or I can use the copy button up here, or I could also use Control uh, C on the keyboard. So Control C, that copies it to the uh, clipboard, minimize that. And if I zoom out a little bit here, go back into artistic text mode, click anywhere I like, and go Control V on the keyboard, or I can use the paste tool here, and that pastes the text in. And what I can now do is I can click anywhere in the text and hit Enter on the keyboard, and that effectively gives me a carriage return like slow. And I can keep going down to make multiple lines of text. So what I'll do is I'll switch above the page, and I will zoom into it by clicking the Zoom tool here. And as you can see, I've now got this text here, which is blocked left. Now, from the second row of tools, you can see I've got all these text tools here. And one of these is this drop down here. And I can line the text to the left, to the center, or to the right. So if I go to center, that's what it looks like there. It aligns the text to the center. I can align it to the right, like so. And I can put it back to the left from here again. Or I can go to the text menu and click left here. And that puts the text back to block left. Now, I can adjust the line spacing by clicking on this tool here, the Node Edit tool, and you'll see I get these nodes here. I'll just zoom or scroll a little bit to the left so we can grab these nodes, and as you can see, if I hold down the left mouse button and drag down, or hold it and drag up, I can actually adjust the line spacing, which means laying out your artwork, depending on what the job is, is quite easy using that tool. So that's how we adjust the line spacing. Okay, I'll zoom back out, and we will now zoom back into this word artistic, and I'll now show you how to rotate the text. So when I click on the text using the object mode tool up here, the arrow, I will see this icon here, rotate nodes. And if I left click on that, it'll actually rotate it, and it will actually snap to increments such as 45 degrees, etc. So if I want it at 45 degrees, you can see there's a little hint on the screen, and that puts it at 45 degrees. Undo that, and it goes back to where it was. So that's how we rotate the text. If I click on it again, you get more rotation handles, like so. The next thing you can do is mirror the text. So if you want to do some text for the inside of a window uh, that you want to see from the outside, you can simply come up to a range, click mirror and rotate and you can mirror horizontally like so and you can also 
mirror vertically. So depending on what you need, you can do uh, mirroring. So I can undo that. And the other thing we'll show you is skew. So if I click on the text again, I get these handles and I can actually skew the text as if it's italicized. And I can also do that backwards as well, like so. And I can undo that. So you can rotate, skew, mirror the text. The other thing you can do is adjust the kerning between the letters. You can see here the T is a little bit close to the R or you might want it to look like that. So what you do is you go into node edit mode up here and you'll see when I do that you see these little nodes down here, these little blue like squares. And if I left click and hold down my left mouse button I can drag this left and right like so. So I can bring that R a little bit closer, maybe just move that T out a, a little bit, uh, bring the I in, the S and you can adjust the kerning or the spacing between all the letters like so to make it look more neat or to suit the particular artwork you're, you're trying to create. The other thing you can do is you can actually hold down the shift key on your keyboard and again left click and you can actually move the text vertically like so um, and then bring it back if you want. So that's a very handy thing to have. An example of that is if I had say I was doing some sort of mathematical or uh, layout work. I might say something is 64 inches squared, right, or square. So what I would do is I might make that two. This is to make a superscript. <coughs> I might make that a little bit smaller by clicking on this little button here. Go back into node edit mode, hold my shift key down, and I can move that up like so. And I can have that effect of superscript like that or I can make it like subscript if you're doing some sort of chemistry thing where you actually need the, the number below like so. So that's how we can adjust the nodes, uh, the, sorry, the characters within the nodes. Okay, let's talk about the fonts themselves. So if I'll just delete that out, I'll grab this artistic text again, and we'll zoom back in. And again, up in the second row of tools, we see our text tools. When in object mode, you'll see all these additional uh, sizing and positioning tools. What you can do is go into text mode and you'll only see the text tools like so. So if I select over that text like that or click in it, I can change the font by clicking on this drop down here and you can see all these fonts I can choose from. So I can just click on a font and it will change the actual font itself there. And I can continue to change the fonts as I need to to anything I like, like so. The next thing is the actual size of the text. Now, I'll just change that to say the word Tom. And I want to show you what the sizing tools actually are referring to. So if I click that T there, you'll see it's telling me it's 1.147 inches high. That's the physical size. The typographic size is 1.721 inches. Now the typographic size is taking account of the entire character as you can see in that sort of light blue color over the top of that letter T. Whereas the physical size is interested in the top of the T to the bottom of the T. So if I change this text to a size of let's say two inches, like so, and I'll write a square of two inches, like that, you'll find that that square is, if I actually make it two inches, you'll find that it actually fits that T perfectly. So that's the physical size of the character or of the of the font. Whereas the typographic size allows from the top of the cursor, as you can see, to the bottom there. And in fact, it includes the ascender and descender, i.e. the entire size of the font. Now, the other thing we can do from the second row of tools is adjust bold and italic. So I'll just put this as to a more standard font like, say, Arial. And you'll see whether I'm in object mode or in text mode, I still get bold and italic up here. So if I go bold, makes the text bold, italic, makes it bold italic, or just italic. So I can control bold and italic from these two buttons here. I can also do that from the text menu. I've got normal and bold italic and bold italic. The other thing we can do is adjust the case. So at the moment we have like sentence case with the capital T and a couple of lowercase letters here. We can do that from the text menu, go to change case here, make it lowercase, we can make it uh, uppercase, and of course what we had originally which was capitalise. So that's some of the other things we can do from the text menu. There are some more advanced text tools in the program. You click on the tools menu here and go down to object manager and uh, property inspector. 
I'll just make the property inspector a little bit higher. You can see here we've got some font tools. So we've got quite a range of tools that we can adjust here. We've got some text tools here. These are more advanced tools. A lot of these won't work in Vinyl Master Cut. They're more dedicated for Vinyl Master Letter and Above. However, some of them will work here in Cut. So I encourage you to have a look at those and work with those to uh, adjust your fonts and your text on the screen. Now, talking about more advanced tools and features, as mentioned earlier in the lesson, if you want to do things like you see in here, where we have you know, text wrapping around things and um, uh, different types of text on arc and text on path, uh, some more advanced kerning features, etc. Um, other things such as making menu boards and using bullet points and even more advanced concepts like text wrapping like so, uh, I strongly recommend you have a look at uh, an upgrade from Vinyl Master Cut. Now, I've just got this website here which you can have a look at. So you can go to uscutter.com and if you click on Vinyl Cutting here and go down to Vinyl Master, you'll see this page pops up and in here you'll see Upgrade Vinyl Master here. You click on that link, the next page comes up like so and you can upgrade your Vinyl Master here. So that's at uscutter.com. The other place to do it is at this website address, fcws3.com and this website here talks a lot about the actual product itself, like the reasons why you'd want to upgrade. So if you go to Letter, for example, and that page pops up, you'll see here a whole range of reasons why you might want to upgrade and all the extras you get, etc. Now, if you're interested in upgrading, you can go here to Buy, Upgrade License. You click on that button there and the cart comes up and you type in your product serial number and follow this through and you can upgrade. It's an instant upgrade. Once the order goes through, you immediately get your new product serial number uh, and a download link to get the most recent version of the product. So that's the end of this lesson. Thank you.